Hello world, welcome back to Razer RC. Got a fun little unboxing for you today. I've got the Arma Granite 4x4 3S BLX. This is a 110 scale electric four wheel drive monster truck. Brushless of course, and it just came out I think today. It sells for $320 here in the United States and uh, super excited because I did have the original V1 Granite 4x4 BLX and uh, that was basically one of my favorite monster trucks ever. Had that about two years ago, uh, sold it, picked up the crane, picked up some other armas, but that probably is my favorite arma of all time. So I was really happy to see that they updated it. This is the V3 version, uh, so it does have some changes. The V2 pretty much was the same as the V1, uh, just with some updated electronics, but this one they did make some real changes. So. Uh, here's the box in front of us. I have not opened it yet. Uh, just some little information about the vehicle. They do have a mega version that came out like a month or two back. Uh, that's a brushed version. That sells for $230. So this is $90 more than the mega. And it's basically the same vehicle just with a brushless uh, motor. I think it does have adjustable turnbuckles. But otherwise, they are pretty much the same. So a quick look at the updates. Uh, they do have easy access diff removal. That is unchanged, pretty much the same as before. Uh, they got easy access power module, nothing there. So these are all pretty much the same. Wheels look a little bit different. Uh, the original ones were like a black chrome. These look like kind of just like a gunmetal gray. The diffs uh, are plastic green gears and plastic input gears, although the internals are all steel. Now they did mention that you know they've been updated to be the same as the 4S and I think that's a little bit of a uh, mischaracterization because they've always been the same. The 4S and 3S diffs have always been the same so really no change there although they did update the slipper so that was a bit of a problem on the original granite. Um, basically the screw would kind of back out on its own. They did change the slipper pads to it looks like a kind of a G10 type fiberglass material. Um, the original ones, I don't, I think they were just a regular friction pad, castellated rather than the octagon style slipper pads. And then they do have the adjustable motor mount. Uh, the original one just kind of had like fixed holes that you would, you know, basically screw it down. I actually like the fixed hole thing because it basically ensured that, you know, your motor mesh never went out of whack, but um, this has more adjustability. So probably fits more what most people want. Did update the body and the bumper, so new bumpers front and rear. Uh, and then they did change the chassis a little bit to make it a little more durable. So they've got these sort of mounted hinge pins that screw into the chassis there. And then another problem that they had was basically rocks would get stuck in the steering. Kind of messed things up, but um, they've, they kind of redesigned it. I think there's a little more gaps now for stuff to fall out. Looking at the side. Um, the big change is really they went back to this uh, Spectrum radio. So the original Granite came with the TTX 300. Um, the uh, V2 had like a Spectrum STX2, which nobody really liked. And then they came out with the SLT3, basically their entry level radio with their RTRs, which is essentially a reskin tactic radio with some updates. And then uh, the, maybe the one downgrade on this, they have the Spectrum S6. 51 servo. So I'm not a big fan of this because they do have 23 tooth servo horns, um, whereas the standard is 25 tooth. Looks like the same ESC. And then the motor, uh, they call it a Spectrum 3200 KV 36 by 60 motor, although I think it's the same. I mean, it's got the same specs and everything. I think it's just rebranded as a Spectrum firmware. We'll have to see. Yeah, so it requires some batteries and a charger. You will have to supply your own LiPo, of course. On the side, comes in two different colors green and red you can probably guess what color I got and last thing it is made in China as with all of the Arma so yeah that's pretty much uh, what's on the box nothing on the back and we'll go ahead and pop this thing open oh yeah other things that they changed rubber sealed bearings. so that was one of the big complaints I had um, this is all the new stuff I guess I should have looked at this side but um, yeah, the original Armas all had metal shielded bearings, which actually provides a little less friction, will give you a little more speed, but doesn't keep out the dirt well. And so, yeah, I think that's an upgrade going with the rubber sealed bearings. Opening the box, what it looks like inside. Pull out this little box, pull out this little cardboard holder, and then here's the actual truck. Boom. 
And a couple little goodies there. So let's kind of take a closer look. Okay, got everything out of the box and unpackaged, and we'll just kind of start with the accessories. Here's a standard manual, some tools, it looks like a two millimeter, maybe a one and a half millimeter uh, hex wrench, uh, clips for your preload adjustment on your shocks, and a little bit of an adjuster, I assume, for the slipper. Nice little manual, just basic stuff in multiple languages, how to drive, turn it on, speed control. Not a whole lot of information in this thing. It's fairly thick, but it's pretty much just because it comes in a bunch of different languages. And then their little technical packs. So, uh, parts diagram, nice to see. Looks like some things on how to adjust the slipper, how to adjust your mesh, a um, little bit of maintenance information as well, removing the center drive, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Nothing super complicated here. Here is their new slipper, and they actually tell you uh, default factory setting on your slipper. A lot of people had problems with these slippers backing out or loosening or whatever. Um, they did redesign it here with like a little bit of a nut here on the back to help hold that screw in place. So nice to see that they actually give you some information. I'm sure they got a lot of service calls about that. All right, let's take a look at the radio. So this is the new SLT3. First time I've owned one of these. Uh, I looks like a really nice radio overall. Foam steering wheel, tiny bit of play, not too bad. Nice beefy thick um, trigger there. Looks like adjustment A B. This is usually used for like your endpoint adjustment. That is one of the cool things about this radio. You can adjust your endpoint so you're not overstressing the servo full left or full right. Looks like you got steering dual rate and then throttle trim and steering trim, as well as I'm sure a LED for letting you know what's on or off. Adjustments on the back, so this is also new for the this radio. Um, basically got 75, 50, and 100% throttle limiter, and then throttle reversing and steering reversing. Not sure what this is, maybe a bind button or power button or something like that. Looks like it uses four double A's, cool. Uh, yeah, so handy little radio integrated antenna looks really nice uh, The TTX 300 was one of my favorite radios um, And so it's nice to see that they basically brought it back as the SLT 3 now spectrum did say they improved the performance of this I'm not sure what that means whether that's range or uh, Speed or what but um, yeah, I'm glad and happy to see that this came back now some people think this is a dual protocol radio so if you're not familiar with spectrum they got a few different ones most of their vehicles use dsmr dsmr but uh, this slt3 uses like a sl protocol or something like that um, it is not compatible with dsmr although they do make some receivers like i think it's the sr315 the new ones are now dual protocol and so would work with this radio or a dsmr radio but this radio is not uh, dual protocol all right, boring stuff out of the way. Let's take a look at this vehicle. So they did redesign the body. Pretty snazzy looking paint scheme. I like it. Um, the brush versions also come with the red and white, although I think it's reversed. Um, there's some nice little like subliminal messages in here. I think it says like buy more Arma or Traxxas sucks or I don't know, something in there. Um, on top, it's just bash something, touch. I don't know, what is that saying? Tough? It says tough or Traxxas sucks. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, good looking body. They did reshape it a little bit. Um, the front has got kind of that big flat nose front. I think the bed has been shortened a little bit. That was an area where they did have some durability issues. The, the back end feels a little bit thicker than before, although overall the material is not super thick. Uh, spray painted silver on the inside. But good looking body. Um, that was one of the pros of the Granite V1 I had. The body was pretty durable except for the bed. Then here's the vehicle itself. Yeah, they did change the color of the wheels. I uh, can't remember if the shape is the same or not, but um, yeah, they're now kind of a matte gray or matte gunmetal. Chassis looks very, very similar. Um, not sure where they changed the steering rack and stuff to let more rocks out. I assume it's just bigger openings here or something like that. Uh, it looks fairly similar. Bumper has been redesigned. That was probably the only thing I really broke on my granite, the bumper. I did break the chassis once, not really sure how, but um, overall that was pretty durable. Shocks was the other main weakness of the V1 and V2. Uh, they did tend to leak, although now they've been redesigned with different O-rings, silicone O-rings. So 
Uh, hopefully that will hold up better. These plastics look a little bit different. Not sure why. They, they, I don't know if they got a little oil on them or what, but they look slightly different. Like the composite is different than what I recall. So that is interesting. 14 millimeter uh, aluminum hexes there. So that is one kind of weird thing about the armor. They use 14 millimeter hexes, whereas most people use 12 millimeter. You can see the same old BLX 100 uh, and then the new Spectrum Servo. That might be a thing I change out. And then the motor. Uh, so the original one did have a heat sink. This heat sink looks different and uh, it does have an integrated fan now. So that's pretty cool to see. They did redesign this power module tab here a little bit. That was one thing that was kind of hard with the original one. A little bit hard to slide this thing out. You know, overall, I have to say the plastics feel a little different on this. I don't know if it's just because it's new or what, but um, maybe a little more nylon content or something. You know, they, they, they are different feeling plastics. Interesting, maybe it's just my imagination. Adjustable turnbuckles, front and rear. Looks like all of them, oh no, yeah, looks like, no. One turnbuckle looks like it's different there. Not 100% sure, we'll have to check that. All your turnbuckles should line up the same way. Plastic center drive shaft. This again looks slightly different, like a different type of plastic, I don't know. I'm wondering if the material has changed because these plastics are like a shinier, kind of blacker uh, plastic than before. New rear bumper with a huge, very wide wheelie bar, more stability, I guess. I never ran that on my granite. People broke that, I just never really felt like I needed it. Um, nice aluminum hinge pin braces on the, looks like the A and the D block. So yeah, that's what we got. Rubber sealed bearings throughout. Um, I think they changed the, body mounts a little bit with a little more adjustment because the original one only had like two or three positions. This one looks like a lot more adjustment to raise or lower your body as you would like. That's cool to see. It comes with an IC5 connector. So this is compatible with all your Horizon EC5 or IC5 batteries. I don't think this is a smart battery. So I'm sorry, smart ESC. So this is not part of their, you know, sort of orange line or their firmer line with telemetry and stuff like that. It looks like just a regular uh, BLX 100, basically like a rebranded Hobby Wing ESC. It looks slightly different. I don't know. I have to compare. Um, yeah, overall it looks pretty nice. Really, the only downside I would say is the servo. It is slightly torquier. Uh, the original one I think is like 93 ounce inches of torque or something like that. This is 101, slightly beefier, but um, yeah, I don't like the fact that it uses like a 23 tooth servo horn. So I'm wondering how they did that with the servo saver. Uh, maybe if they have a new servo saver or what, that usually just mounts right onto the servo. But yeah, glad to see they got this cool radio. Glad to see they basically improved uh, the design of the vehicle a little bit. You can see that BLX adjustable motor mount. Um, so that actually, let's take a look at that. It looks like a kind of a cast piece. Um, you could buy like a machined aluminum one before. So that is not quite as thick or, um, you know, nice as the original adjustable one that you could buy. Now, the other issue people had was dirt getting into the uh, motor or power module here in the bottom. Uh, they tried to seal that off a little bit better. It does look like there's less of a gap there. So hopefully that is an improvement. You know, basically <clears throat> this bearing would go out a lot, get a lot of dirt in it. It's one thing you really always had to check on the, the V1 and the V2s. Um, that bearing would always go out and need frequent replacement just because dirt was getting in there. You also kind of had to clean off uh, the spur gear and, uh, you know, basically clean out that module periodically if you're running in the dirt. Um, not too much else to report. Looks pretty good overall. I do like these tires. Um, these always worked well on my V1. Rear end is quite stiff. Front a little bit softer, although not much damping. Uh, pretty stiff springs, but not much damping in these shocks. Interesting. So uh, looks pretty good overall. I'm pretty impressed. Always really liked my Armor Granite. I also have a Haas, a Stampede, and the Team Associated Rival MT10. Uh, so I've been testing those as well. And so we'll have to see, does this hold up to those guys or uh, have those basically passed it by? So anyways, that's my unboxing, the Arma Granite 4x4 3S BLX V3 version. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely like, share, subscribe, hit the notifications button. Look for more videos soon. Thanks for watching.